In today's video, we will explore everything there is to know about impulse control, what it is, why we need it, and tips and strategies on improving it. There's a battle inside my mind. A constant war that's hard to find. I want to do what feels so right, but I know that I should fight. Impulse control, I need it now. To keep me from going off somehow. To keep my head above the fray. And make the right choices every day. Sometimes I feel so out of control. It's hard to say no to the things that tempt me so. But I know that I must let go. Impulse control, I need it now. To keep me from going off somehow. To keep my head above the fray. And might make the right choices every day. It's not easy to resist the things that make us twist. But we have to find strength to make the right choice no matter the length. Impulse control, I need it now. To keep me from going off somehow. To keep my head above the fray and make the right choices every day. Impulse control, I know it's tough, but I will try, that's enough. To keep my mind in line and free from the chains of my own desire, you'll see. What happens in the brain when we exercise self-control and how can we improve our ability to resist temptation? The prefrontal cortex, which is part of the brain responsible for decision-making and impulse control, is the area of the brain most closely associated with self-control. When we exercise self-control, this area of the brain activates and helps us resist temptation. However, this area can become fatigued and less effective over time, which can make it harder to exercise self-control. There are several strategies for improving self-control, including practicing mindfulness, setting clear goals, and breaking down large goals into smaller, more manageable parts. Additionally, focusing on long-term benefits of exercising self-control can help us resist temptation in the short term. From mindfulness to willpower exercises, what are some effective strategies for developing self-control? One effective strategy is mindfulness, which involves being present in the moment and aware of our thoughts and feelings. By practicing mindfulness, we can become more aware of our impulses and learn to resist them. Another effective strategy is to set clear goals and break them down into smaller, more manageable steps. This can help us stay focused and motivated and make it easier to exercise self-control. Willpower exercises such as delaying gratification can also help build self-control. For example, if we want to eat a donut, we can delay eating it for a few minutes or hours to build our willpower. How does self-control impact our ability to achieve our goals and succeed in life? Research has shown that self-control is a key predictor of success in life. People who are able to exercise self-control are more likely to achieve their goals, perform better in school and at work, and have better relationships. One reason self-control is so important for success is that it helps us to stay focused and motivated. When we exercise self-control, we are better able to resist distractions and stay on task, which can help us achieve our goals more quickly and effectively. Additionally, self-control helps us make better decisions. When we are able to resist temptation and make choices that align with our long-term goals, we are more likely to be successful in achieving those goals. How does self-control impact our relationships with others? And what can we do to improve our self-control in these situations? Self-control can have a significant impact on our relationship with others. When we exercise self-control, we are better able to regulate our emotions and respond to others in a thoughtful way and constructive way. This can help us build stronger and more positive relationships with others. On the one hand, when we lack self-control, we may be more likely to react impulsively or lash out at others, which can damage our relationships and cause conflict. To improve our self-control in relationships, it can be helpful to practice mindfulness and self-awareness. By becoming more aware of our thoughts and emotions, we can learn to regulate them more effectively and respond to others in a more constructive way. It can also be helpful to practice empathy and perspective taking. By putting ourselves in other shoes and trying to understand their perspective, we can respond to them in a more compassionate and thoughtful way. How can self-control help us overcome addiction? And what are some strategies for building self-control in the recovery process? Self-control can be a powerful tool for overcoming addiction. When we exercise self-control, we are better able to resist our, the urge to use drugs or engage in addictive behaviors, which can help us break the cycle of addiction and being in the recovery process. There are several strategies that can be helpful to building self-control in the recovery process. 
Mindfulness can help us become more aware of our thoughts and emotions, which can help us regulate them more effectively. Mindfulness can be practiced through meditation, deep breathing, or other relaxation techniques. Having a strong support network can be helpful for building self-control in the recovery process. This can include friends, family members, or support groups like Alcoholics Anonymous or Narcotics Anonymous. Setting goals can help us stay motivated and focused on our recovery. By setting achievable goals and tracking our progress, we can build our self-control and stay on track with our recovery. Taking care of ourselves physically and emotionally can be helpful for building self-control in the recovery process. This can include getting enough sleep, eating a healthy diet, and engaging in regular exercise. In some cases, professional help may be needed to overcome addiction and build self-control. This can include therapy, medication, assisted treatment, or other forms of professional support. How does self-control impact our mental health? And what are some strategies for building self-control to improve our overall well-being? How does self-control impact our mental health? And what are some strategies? Self-control can have a significant impact on our mental health. When we exercise self-control, we are better able to regulate our emotions and respond to stress in a healthy way. This can help us manage anxiety, depression, and other mental health concerns more effectively. On the other hand, when we lack self-control, we may be more likely to engage in unhealthy behaviors like substance abuse, overeating, or overspending, which can exacerbate mental health concerns. Instead of giving in to your temptation right away, try to delay it. Tell yourself you can have it later or after you've completed a task or a certain amount of time has passed. Then delay and the, the delay can give you time to reconsider your decision. You may use, use a mantra like, I will do it in a minute or I can have it later. Think about the negative consequences of giving in to your temptation. For example, if you're trying to stick to a diet, remind yourself of how you'll feel after eating that slice of cake or how you will be set back in your weight loss goals. You can also use the mantra, this isn't helpful for my goals or this will cause me to X, Y, or Z. If possible, remove yourself from the situation that's tempting you. If you're trying to quit smoking and you're around friends who are smoking, excuse yourself and go somewhere else. Engage in a different activity that can take your mind off the temptation. For example, if you're trying to resist the urge to check your phone, go for a walk instead or read a book. You can also use the mantra, I will do X, Y, and Z instead. It's important to have a plan of how to handle those impulses and be aware of what tempts you so that you have a plan on how to address it when it happens. The more you practice the skill, the easier it gets until it's automatic. Embrace those moments and treat them as a way to get in more practice to reach you to a, to a way that you want to be instead of letting it consume you. How does self-control impact your ability to make good decisions? And what can you do to improve your self-control in decision-making situations? Self-control is essential when it comes to decision-making. When we exercise self-control, we are better able to resist temptation and make decisions that align with our goals and our values. On the other hand, when we lack self-control, we may be more likely to make impulsive decisions that are not in our best interest. When we have a clear understanding of our values, we are better able to make decisions that align with them. By taking the time to identify our core values, we can build our self-control and make better decisions. Being in the present moment can help us become more aware of our thoughts and our emotions which can help us regulate them more effectively by practicing mindfulness through meditation, deep breathing, or other relaxation techniques. We can build our self-control and make better decisions. There is a space between the stimulus and response that we can use to regulate our self-control. Pausing for that moment is beneficial. Setting achievable goals can help us stay motivated and focused on our priorities. By setting goals related to our decision-making, such as avoiding certain behaviors or making a specific choice, we can build our self-control and make better decisions. Positive self-talk can be helpful for building self-control and making better decisions. By reminding ourselves of our goals and our values and encouraging ourselves to make the best decision, we can build our self-control and make better decisions. Create your own mantras that work for you for any given situation that you're trying to control. Overall, building self-control is an important part of making good decisions. By identifying our values, practicing mindfulness, setting goals, and practicing positive self-talk, we can build our self-control and make better decisions. When temptation comes knocking at my door and my mind is a raging storm, 
I must find the strength to say no more and keep my impulse in its form. The lure of pleasure can be so strong and the thrill of the moment so real, but I know in the end it's wrong and the consequences will reveal. So I take a breath and count to 10 and remind myself of the cost of giving in to the impulse within and the potential that I've lost. It's not easy to resist the urge to let go and just give in, but with discipline and self-control, I know that I can win. For the, in the end, it's not about the prize or the monetary rush we seek, but the person we become, the wiser and the wise, and the inner strength that we seek. So when temptation comes knocking at your door and your impulse screams for release, remember the power that you have in store and choose wisely for your own peace.